right, I'm going to hit gut it. All right, good evening, everybody. I am Marilyn McDonald, Chair of Bridgewater Conservation Commission. I'm going to do a quick rundown just in case anybody on has not been to a public hearing before and how they proceed. Um, Bridgewater, uh, Bridgewater, Bridgewater Conservation Commission has jurisdiction within 100 foot from any wetlands and 200 foot from any riverfronts. We are governed by both rules and regulations of state and local bylaws to ensure minimal impact of wetlands for any filing within the 100 foot to ensure minimal impact um, and meets performance standards. Uh, what happens is the applicant presents. The board and the agent have opportunities to ask questions. I then do <coughs> open it up to the public. Uh, we ask that you approach all your questions through the chair. I will then designate who will be able to help answer and address those questions. Again, this is only wetlands, wetland questions only, and we do have to keep them to a minimum um, so we can keep proceedings going. Uh, two things either happen. We either continue a meeting um, or we close a meeting. If we close a meeting, there is 21 days for the um, Conservation Commission to render a decision. Uh, once a decision is rendered, there is 10 business days of appeal period with Mass DEP before any order of conditions is valid. That being said, uh, going right into the agenda, we have old business tonight of a uh, abbreviated notice of resource area delineation on 01300 Burner Street. We have an abbreviated notice of a resource area on 350 Cross. We go into new business of 900 Bedford Street uh, for a notice of a tent and another notice of a tent for 30 Colonial Drive and then at the end, Conservation uh, Commission business. So with that being said, I'm going to open up right away to old business notice of resource area delineation, 0, 1300 Vernon Street, map 124, lots 2, 6, 12, and 81. Uh, we have a representative on, I see Rebecca. I am here, yes, yes. Uh, Steve, me, who's going to start? That is up to the chair. All right, so um, I will okay. start then. So, okay. um, we are in receipt of Silva's, re Silva's response to the BCS group. Um, I can tell you, and Steve can step into that, the staff has not had a chance to look at it just coming back today. Um, so the staff has not had a chance to look at it to give a response, um, nor has uh, BCS had the um, opportunity to really have time to look at it and give a response. We also have with us um, Azu and Jen, who will also be looking at it and will need to be able to give us, um, you know, a, a chance to uh, for them to respond to to the uh, uh, letter from uh, Silver's Engineering. I can tell you from the commission standpoint, we're gonna wanna revisit it and see those key areas um, that were discussed about. So um, I'll ask Steve, any comments from what I yeah. just talked about timelines? Yes. So I was looking through my emails today. I returned to work yesterday after um, a personal illness. So um, the email with the response to BSC's third party review was given to our department on March 3rd. Uh, I was coincidentally out at that time. I saw the comments for the first time yesterday uh, and started to begin a response to those comments. Um, and also we do have on the line tonight, um, Matt Byrne with BSC and Ethan, who are part of the third party review team um, that was contracted out uh, to do the third party review of the delineation. Uh, so if they have any comments um, leading from this point forward. But needless to say, I have um, started my review of those comments. I have um, looked very closely at the intermittent stream uh, comments and also the comments about the cart path and the bordering vegetated wetland. I think those are the two points that are that are mainly left uh, as points of contention and points to discuss that there's a difference of opinion on. Um, again, my, my response and my suggestions to the commission are not available yet. I'm in the midst of um, coming up with them. So I'm gonna need a little bit more time. And as the chairwoman had said, um, they would like to see the site. So I think it's fair for them to be able to see the site now that we have pinpointed a couple of locations um, that we've, that we've uh, sort of circled and denoted as key points of interest. So Rebecca, instead of like kind of going around in circles in this, um, would you consider uh, doing a continuance to the um, to the 24th? We would then have had a quorum walk and I'm sure by then, um, Azu, are you there? Hun? Yes, Madam Chair, I am on our barely, barely staying awake. <laughs> um, Azu, would, would that give you time to, um, to look at uh, reviews and give a response along with us. Uh, that be that would that would be more than enough time for me. Okay, Jennifer, are you there, honey? Yes, I am. 
All right. So, uh, Rebecca, I'm going to you know, put it back in your hands. Again, that's our take. We'd like to get out there. I can set a quorum site walk tonight. We certainly need the um, peeps involved to be able to take a good look and give us a, a thorough response. So, um, we are in agreement. We are in agreement. We will ask for continuation to the 24th. I would like to know when you think you can make that quorum site walk so I can inform the client and everybody involved. I think we can try to, but let's see if we can book it right now because I'm still like on that hospital break. So I know. Ooh, that I yay. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going back. Um, oh. So um, I think in the week of the 21st, while I have um, Eileen, Harry, uh, 21st, 22nd, I do know I have a later appointment in the day, 23rd, 24th. Anything work best for anybody on Wendy? Um, anybody? I can, I'm pretty open, so. I can do just about any day. And just for clarification, very quickly, Marilyn, um, we do not have, I do not see Harry on. Um, okay. So it's the three of, um, three of you tonight. And, and also <laughs> just to add on to that, if you have um, two or less, if we can't get a quorum, then it doesn't have to be advertised and we can get out there whenever the time is appropriate, weather permitting or whatever, so. Okay, I, I think we'd probably know that we can probably do a quorum date now where it's plenty of time. Um, I can't I can't be anywhere until like at least three or three thirty in the afternoon. Well, it'll yeah, be like I was going to say lighter. time change. So we should be okay with like later in the afternoon. That's after the time change, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it's this weekend. Okay, so the only later date I couldn't do, guys, would be the 22nd due to a later appointment. So we could do Monday the 21st, Wednesday the 23rd, or Thursday the 24th. And Wendy, yeah, we'd love to see you um, with the site walk with us. And this is a, you know, a good wetland. So uh, does any of those days work for anybody now? Uh, either one, Monday or Wednesday. Okay. Um, why don't we post it for, uh, what you say, 3.30 Monday? Yeah, 3.30 would be good. Okay, so why don't we go ahead, um, Rebecca, we'll make a quorum posting for um, the 21st of March for 3.30 on site on Vernon on this. I will inform the landowner and the applicant. Sounds good. Uh, Thank you. All right. Um, Madam and Chairperson, you... oh. if I may, uh, Matt Byrne with BSC Group. Yes, Matt. Uh, hi, I, uh, I think it might be helpful to have the peer review uh, team and at least myself involved in that site visit if if um, if you would like me to uh, actually uh, excellent yes I, I would like that I'm sorry that I didn't you know think to bring that up but uh, okay. that would be great I, I do want to just mention that's probably out of scope I I'm guessing so um, I just have to sort of confirm with mm -hmm. you and the client that we need to do a change order to cover that but otherwise um, I, I, I think it would be helpful to be there with you. I think it would be helpful to have, you know, um, Patty, Rebecca, you know, your team on site. Um, can we confirm with that, please? I will we'll reach out and see if that all works. Yes, you bet. Oh, okay. All right, okay, sounds Rebecca, good. We can work on that. Yep. Yep, we'll work on that. Thank you, Matt. Um, so in the meantime, anybody on this hearing for Vernon Street, um, 0 and 1300, uh, we are continuing it after some site walks and it will resume on Thursday, the 24th, again, 530 under old business. So um, Rebecca, you know to send in your continuance um, by our I, I, but, in the, yep. Yep, but in the meantime, the chair would entertain a motion, please. Wendy? I make a motion that the zero and 1300 be continued till March 24th meeting. Second. All right, Heron a second. Um, any further discussion? Heron none, it's a roll call vote. Marilyn McDonald, aye. Eileen Prisco? Aye. And um, I don't know, you're not Harry, uh, Wendy Smith. <laughs> aye. All right, very good. Thank you all involved, and uh, we shall see you on site on the 21st. And again, anybody listening, that is continued to Thursday, March 24th at 5.30. I thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, all. Good night, good night. all. Thank all you, right, everyone. we are going to go right into the next um, old business, which is the abbreviated Notice of Resource Area Delineation 350 Cross Street, Map 118, Lots 89, 25, 24, 23. Um, and if Jen and Zoo was still on, thank you. I don't know if they signed off quickly, but thank you. You still need me, Madam Chair?
Uh, who's that, Jen? Yeah. No, I was just saying, thank you for being on for um, the, the, the first one. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening. Just, um, if you guys went quick, so. <laughs> Here the 24. All right, uh, representative for um, Cross Street. I believe we still have Rebecca. Rebecca. Yes, I am. This is a continuation. We had the plan on the screen last time. You uh, would like to visit and throw a shovel in the ground. So how did it go? I had um, surgery in the meantime and was not able to make it out to the site. So um, it is on my first order of business to do early next week. Uh, that would be the 14th in that neighborhood. So um, I have I have to um, arrange with Harry because I said I would go out there with Harry and you did? Yep. do a walkthrough. So um, I will do that early next week. And by the next meeting, I'm sure we will have a um, suggestion or an idea of where we're heading. Um, I know Marilyn, when I spoke to her earlier today, did have some questions about uh, some of the calcs on the isolated uh, depression area. Um, if there was any, I forget where we had left that. Oh, you know, uh, we have not completed those yet. I, I okay. hope that you had gone out there and but you have not so okay um we'll so it can be, uh, roll it all into one would you uh, rebecca would you have calcs um, ready by the next meeting well you, my thought was if we were going to revise the plan because we had already made a little little change that i would just throw all that on the plan so i was kind of hoping if okay. you had changes to things i would but if it's not working out that way it's not working out that way um you want to follow get, up with Steve then after his walk yep. um, and, and shovel adventure? Okay. Right. <laughs> we'll and that. so that would be, yes, I will have a plan change finalized with those calcs on the next, for the next meeting, March All right. 28th, 24th. Okay. So then uh, you know that you can send that continuance in. And at this point, the chair would uh, entertain a motion, please. Wendy. I make a motion for a continuance for 350 Cross Street to March 24th meeting. Second. All right, Aaron, any second, any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, uh, roll call vote. Marilyn McDonald, aye. Eileen Prisco, aye. Wendy Smith, aye. For the same thing, for anybody on tonight that is on for the filing of 350 Cross Street, this is your notice that we have. Um, Push that on to a 24th meeting Thursday, March 24th at 5.30 is when 350 Cross Street will be heard. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, All right, we're gonna roll right into new business. Um, I have notice of intent 900 Bedford Street. I do have uh, the notice here. Oh, yeah. It's map 88, lot 133. The applicant is representative Jeff uh, Checkaway and Zachary Richards of Boha. So let me just read the uh, legal add-in so we could have them start to officially open. 900 Bedford Street legal notice, notice of Public Care and Conservation Commission of Bridgewater, Massachusetts. In accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 in the Town of Bridgewater Local Wetland Bylaw, the Commission of the Conservation will hold a public hearing on 310 held at a virtual meeting over Zoom, a link in instructions um, to participate in the meeting will follow and post it in the calendar of the town's website of WW Bridgewater Mass. Um, a recording of the, of the meeting will be available and also posted to the town's website within 48 hours after the meeting ends. The hearing is for a notice of intent filed by Claire Properties. Um, the uh, applicant proposes a 219,000 square foot industrial facility. The property is Hold on, my eyes are getting tiny here. Uh, the property is by uh, Kunz Ingerberg and located at 900 Bedford Street, Bridgewater Map 88133. Please contact the Bridgewater Conservation Office at 508 697 0950 for any hearing date and time. All interested parties are encouraged to attend. Notice is published in the Enterprise on 33. So, um, in the call, I assume you've got your green cards on this one? Yes, I do have proof of them. Okay, all right, so um, 900 Bedford, you are now open. And I just shared, um, I co-hosted with Zach so that he could share his screen and provide a presentation. Great, thank you, Steve and members of the board. And I just wanna say, uh, Steve, I hope your surgery went well. I'm glad to see you on tonight. Um, and also uh, impressed at the speed of the, uh, the hearing so far. It's a uh, night and day from my hearing last night. So I'll try to keep the pace moving for everyone. Um, 
My name is Zach Richards. I'm with Bowler. Um, we're the, the site civil engineer on the, the project. Um, quick introduction of our team here with uh, Jeff Checkaway, who's with Calair Properties, or who's the owner applicant. Um, and then we have um, Tom Liddy, who's with Lucas Environmental. They're the wetland scientists on the project. And then Justin Heal as well with me from Bowler, who's the uh, registered landscape architect. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and share my screen and dive right into um, our brief presentation that we've prepared here. Um, so uh, this again is for 900 Bedford Street. Um, I can flip back. Just quick, quick update on kind of give you a picture of where we're at in the process. Um, we met with the town early um, in the fall of last year to present the project initially and get some initial feedback. We then went through uh, a MEPA process, which is a permitting process at the state level um, that's required for a project of this size and nature. Um, and since we are on Bedford Street, we are required to seek mass dot permits. So um, that triggered MEPA review. We went through that process at the end of last year, um, which required a pretty thorough alternatives analysis. Um, then we looked at a couple of different size projects and alternatives for the site, alternative uses, um, and that certificate requiring no further review um, was issued at the end of uh, at the end of the year in 2021. Um, We've since uh, met with the, you know, the head department heads of the town, um, engineer and DPW to review the project, get feedback, filed with planning board and conservation commission. We had our first planning board hearing um, and here we are in front of the conservation commission. So um, it's been, you know, been some, some process and, and uh, a lot in the works to get a lot of feedback from a lot of different uh, groups um, and the town uh, to get where we are today. Um, so this is a quick aerial of the site, um, which you can see shown in red here. Uh, this is oriented with north at the top of the screen. Um, and we have Flag Street that actually uh, fronts on a, a small portion of the project. Primarily the frontage is along Bedford Street. Um, and then there is a private street, which is May Avenue on the south side of the site. Um, mostly wooded today, as you can see. Flipping to the next slide, this is really the existing conditions uh, of the site. Um, and you can see the orientation has switched on you a little bit. So North is now to the left side of the screen. Um, and Bedford, again, is on, on the bottom of, of the screen there with Mayav on the right. Um, so what you're seeing here is, is uh, the wetland delineation for the site, which uh, the delineation is shown in cyan here. Um, or teal, and then we have uh, the 25, 50, and 100 foot buffer zones in, shown in magenta. And at this point, I'll just turn it over to Tom Liddy really briefly to just touch on his delineation at the site. Thank you, Zach. Uh, again, for the record, my name is Tom Liddy, professional wetland scientist from Lucas Environmental. Um, I have, uh, I'm a professional wetland scientist with over 20 years experience in delineation and permitting. Uh, we were retained by the applicant to delineate uh, wetland resource areas in the subject property. Um, we went out and delineated wetlands in September of last year. Uh, as you can see in the plan, there's a very large swath of bordering vegetative wetland, uh, which is identified as wetland A uh, in the field as well as on the plans. Uh, within the project area, the wetland originates um, at a culvert along Bedford Street in the lower uh, left-hand corner of the screen. Uh, it extends east and eventually turns and flows south towards May Ave. Uh, the USGS map depicts a intermittent stream within the interior portions of the swamp. Um, the stream was evaluated to determine if the stream would be classified as perennial in accordance with the Rivers Protection Act and regulations. Uh, the WPA Wetland Protection Act uh, employs the use of stream stats uh, modeling to determine affected watershed area jurisdiction. Uh, the watershed for uh, this segment of the river was determined to be point zero, uh, excuse me, 0 0.32 miles. Um, this is well below uh, the threshold uh, required to show that a stream 
uh, that's mapped as intermittent may be actually perennial. Um, any stream under a half a square mile will be intermittent. Uh, therefore, the stream's confirmed as intermittent with no front area on the property. Uh, I'd also like to point out there's no certified vernal pools or 100 year floodplain uh, within the project area and the site. Um, and, and also uh, the site's not located within a uh, wellhead protection area, ACEC, ORW, or watershed protection, uh, watershed protection area. Uh, with that, I'll just turn it back over to Zach. If you have any other uh, wetland related questions, I'd be happy to answer them, but um, uh, back to you, Zach. Great, thanks so much, Tom. Um, so rolling right into the fun stuff, which is what we're looking to do here as part of the project. Um, this next slide uh, shows, shows the proposed project. So what we're looking at is about a 100 and, sorry, just taking a second to load here. Uh, but the proposed project involves a approximately 220,000 square foot um, warehouse facility. Um, and we've got curb cuts that are, are located off of, sorry, let me exit out of here. There it is. Okay. Um, so what you can see here is the, uh, the building shown in tan here. I apologize for the, the delay. Um, so the building shown in the center here, as I said, uh, about 220,000 uh, square feet. Um, We've got uh, circulation is, is provided to the site off of two primary curb cuts off of Bedford Street. Um, and part of what drew, drove the, uh, the layout to the site here, um, I know I mentioned a, a number of, a, a thorough alternatives analysis that we went through for the project. Um, we were balancing a couple of things, trying to really stay out of the 100 foot buffer zone here. So, um, what you're seeing of the end result of this project is about 80% of the 100 foot buffer zone um, that is shown, uh, we are, we are uh, retaining in its existing condition. So um, we kept disturbance to the, to the buffer zone at a minimum. Um, we are a little tight, you can see in this location. Um, and what we were trying to balance was um, trying to stay out of the 100 foot buffer zone, obviously respecting the, the 25 foot no touch um, at that location, but also trying to, to still maintain a, a, a su efficient, uh, you know, suitable, uh, uh, I guess, landscape existing vegetation buffer along the property line um, and from our abutters on May Ave, and also create, uh, you know, sufficient separation between our curb cut and, um, and May Avenue. Um, so that kind of drove the, the layout that you're seeing. Um, in general, we've got, you know, vehicular passenger vehicle parking, um, for the employees along the side front, um, you know, north and south sides of the building. And then most of the, uh, the loading, um, and truck traffic would be, uh, you know, parking and loading in, in the rear portion of, of the site on the east side of the building here. Um, again, you know, with, with the two curb cuts that align and, and kind of provide um, pretty pretty suitable, you know, ninety degree access to Bedford Street, um, and, and work well for the truck turning movements required for for such a facility. Um, you know, I, I know stormwater is a big piece of this. Um, we did, you know, in this alternative, you know, some of the other options we looked at were larger footprints, more impervious coverage, uh, more disturbance. As I mentioned, disturbing up to fifty percent of of that 100 foot buffer zone and some of the alternatives here. Um, but we landed where we did, um, which I, I think is a great fit for, for the site and the usable um, area that we have on site. So what that allowed us as well is a little bit of flexibility here to use more low impact development techniques for stormwater management. So um, in general, aside from the roof area and a couple of tight locations, um, we've really tried to avoid uh, the curb and gutter and, and piped, uh, you know, closed pipe uh, approach for stormwater. And this has lent itself to some good curb breaks, some, some, some grass swales with check dams um, and riprap and, and infiltration basins. 
um, which I know is encouraged in the in the stormwater handbook. So um, I think the project turned out as a great example of of kind of how you can really utilize um, LID approaches successfully on a large site like this. Um, and we've got you know a couple basins. There's one in the corner near Mayav. There's another one on the other side of the site um, to the north uh, of that curb cut, and then a large basin in the rear on the the eastern side of the site. Um, and that's really the bulk of the stormwater management. It meets all of the uh, you know the ten stormwater standards. Um, we're providing all the the TSS um, removal um, infiltration as required by the regulations um, and phosphor, as well as phosphorus treatment and, and some of those more stringent local stormwater standards. Um, so all of that's been very well documented in the drainage report. Um, we've also, you know, utilities are pretty readily available to the Bedford, I mean, on Bedford Street. So, you know, we're well served for, for sewer. Um, we've got a water loop around the building, which was some early feedback from the town that we've incorporated with hydrants and whatnot, um, reviewed this closely with the police department um, as well as um, the fire department. Um, I think I alluded to working through, uh, you know, the planning board process. We've gotten a lot of good feedback from all the town departments. We actually responded to all those comments um, last week, um, including, uh, you know, thorough review of, of all the drainage design and the engineering by um, the town engineer um, who we, we've had a couple um, calls and meetings with. And I think we're really close to um, satisfactorily addressing all, all of the comments and concerns that all those department heads have. Um, so again, here in front of you guys, um, I think at this point, I'd like to turn it back over um, to, the, um, to the commission for, for feedback comments. Um, but I also had, had introduced Justin from, from my team who, who could speak to the landscape um, and, and the approach there, if, if so, uh, if the commission's interested in hearing uh, about that as well. But at this point, I'll turn it back over. And thanks again. Thank you, Zachary, for your presentation. Much appreciated. Um, so I didn't even think there must be large plans, Nicole, in the office. Yes, Nicole, there are. there are large plans in the office? Huh? Yeah, we have full plan sets in the okay. office. Okay, so, um, so my only question, Doc, would be, you know, we'll grab some full plans. Obviously, we're going to, we need to go out and take a look. Um, have you staked anything off where those tight areas are? Uh, we have not at this point. Would you be able to do that? Yes, definitely. Okay, so um, obviously, we'll take a look. I did not get to read the other stuff that was forwarded, but um, obviously, we'll take care of that before the next meeting. So that's the only question I really had is, um, you know, obviously, the flags are fresh out there. We'll be able to follow everything, correct? Um, yeah, we could take a look and confirm. I think, like Tom said, we delineated in September. So with some of the storms, um, we might need to just freshen those up, but we can certainly do that when we go to stake out um, some of the tight areas that okay. I would do. And I'll, I'll, I'll give it to Steve in a minute, but I'm probably thinking the same thing that we probably head out the following week. So that gives you some time to look at those flags and then just take out those those tight corner, corners. Um, and that would be the only thing I would be interested in. Um, Steve, any further um, thoughts on your end with that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been involved um, for quite a while in the planning process of this project. So I've seen sort of a lot of the changes um, as they've sort of evolved over time and seen basically the fact that most, for the most part, uh, Bowler's done a really good job of, um, you know, making sure that they don't um, maximize their footprint within the buffer zone, which is strictly what this project is. It's a buffer zone only project. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, I think um, on my punch list of things to do was to get out to the site after the test pits were done, which I know was very recently. And then also, um, to also see that area uh, of that egress of where that retaining wall might have to go and where that quite that tight turn is where you're going to be encroaching down to the 25 foot buffer. Um, I think that will be a point of uh, emphasis for the commission. Uh, that will be probably the most point of attention as we move forward and progress towards project time um, with silt, uh, silt fencing and hay bale and making sure that that, that um, that barrier is is very well set so that we don't have any sedimentation and erosion. Uh, the site's pretty flat um, from the way I've seen it from the brief walk I did do around it. Um, and then I also just need to check in with the town engineer as far as uh, confirming 
that it, the stormwater management plan is in fact in compliance with both the state and um, local codes uh, on that front, which uh, Greg is always usually pretty quick to get back to us and he's very thorough. So uh, that's just something that I need to do. And then once I have those pieces of information, then I feel like I'll have uh, enough to get back to the commission and suggest um, what I think from my, my personal expertise and standpoint on this. Um, but everything I've seen so far has been a great effort to move this project forward toward, to, towards compliance and uh, permitting, so. All right, thank you, Steve. You're kind of on the same tail I was in that encroachment area. At this time, Eileen, any comments? No, I think it looks pretty clean other than those buffer issues. So when we okay, go back Wendy, home. any comments from you, hon? Um, I agree. I, I'm good with it. We'll wait for Steve. So my thoughts, and, and Wendy, I know it probably uh, won't happen with you, where I think it would be too tight to do two walks um, after 3.30, but I can certainly put it out there to Eileen and Steve if we want to try to add theirs on at the same day we're going out and look at this as a quorum together. We could, you know, uh, put that on as the 21st also. And again, I, I believe Harry will probably be joining us on these. If not, then it just, you know, at least it's posted. We don't have to worry about it. If a is there. Um, Eileen, thoughts on that? I agree. No, I'm fine with that. I can okay. do both. So Zach, what we'll do is we'll go out the same day we're going out with the um at the project that's final, and that's going to be the 21st. Um, I think a two o'clock time would give us plenty. Steve, do you agree? Before our three, was it three or three thirty? We agreed on for um. I think it was three thirty. So we might want to push them a little closer together. So two thirty. What time would you suggest? Would I would say two thirty. Two thirty would give us ample time on Bedford Street. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, definitely. So that what we'll do is we'll we'll put a quorum sidewalk up for two thirty uh, for the twenty first. That should um, that give you enough time to just go out there, and just put the stakes up where those encroachments are tight, and that's really the only areas that we really need to stake. We don't need to stake at the whole building and all that stuff. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that should be enough time. Okay. Great. Um, anything further from the commissioners? Okay. At this time, I'll ask anybody um, in attendance that has a question on the filing for um, 900 Bedford Street. You can raise your hand in the chat or... And I know we have a number of residents um, in the crowd tonight and they've all been muted. So if you can use your hand function or mention up in the chat uh, that you'd like to make a comment and then I will unmute you and allow you to do so. We see no comments, Steve. I'm not seeing anyone trying to comment. And I don't see anything in the chat, Marilyn, either. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then um, that being said, um, Chair would entertain a motion, please, for a continuance. Wendy? Uh, I would ma make a motion to continue 900 Bedford Street until the 24th of March. Second. We're going to be busy March 24th again. <laughs> Yeah. Marilyn. All right, did I hear a second? Yes, twice. Okay, sorry about that. All right, hearing a second, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, roll call vote. Marilyn McDonald, aye. Eileen Frisco. Aye. Wendy Smith. Aye. All right, thank you guys very much. And we will get out there on the 21st. Thank you again. Great, thank you all. Thank you have all. Good night. All right, have good a good night. night. All right, moving right along. Um, Nicole, we're going into Notice of Intent 30 Colonial Drive Map 111 Lot 31-CB. Um, Do we have um, an advertisement from the paper? Yeah, they both should have been in that. It, I sent you one thing, but if you scroll down, they should both be in there for you. I did scroll down. The only thing I saw was a thing from Larry Silva saying it was gonna be advertised. I need the actual advertisement. Give me one second. I do have that. I'm sorry. And and they confirm the green cards. Yep. Okay. So green card meant I meant to do that. Um, is there anything uh, we can go to while she's looking that up? Approval minutes. of minutes. We can go right into conservation business of approval of minutes. Um, yep. Eileen and uh, Wendy, are you good on those? Have you reviewed them? I'm good. I have. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's fine. All right then. Um, the chair would entertain a motion, please. Motion to make approve a minute to the meeting. Excellent. I right. second. All right, here in a second. Uh, roll call vote. Marilyn McDonald, aye. Eileen Prisco, aye. Wendy Smith, aye. All right, so the minutes are approved. And um, I think 
think that was it besides any environmental plan discussion. So we'll just have um, Nicole read that in when she grabs it. Rebecca might have it too. I'm looking right now, yep. Rebecca, would you like to be co-host so you can share screen? Yes, I would, if you don't mind. View. This is it right here. Oh, I go. think I have it up. Is that the right one? <laughs> the actual ad, though. Yep. That's from Larry Silva. I need the actual ad. Oh. I oh. Oh. I think yep. that so so Marilyn, that is the ad. They just copy and pasted it on their letterhead. That's no, but she ad. needs to see the actual newspaper. I, yeah, posting. we need to see. Yeah, we need to yeah. see. The, I or, see. Sorry, my uh, No, it's all or, good. Uh, did or digital print of it. I well, think I'm that's to, what I was. That's. Sent. Um, I have the digital print from. Let's see, what is this? Public notices. But did you actually <laughs> want to see it in the newspaper? Well, I just have to know that it was legally out. Yeah, I have it. Oh, yeah. Right. Just that it, yeah. Made the, that it made the paper. I can actually. Okay, so how about Jeffrey you and... let me share the screen and I yep. can at least show you that it's on public notices and you can see that it was all I this just other stopped. You should be good, Rebecca, I, I think. Okay. Yeah. Try and clicky, clicky, clicky. Did you share the right one, though? It has to be the one that says Silver Engineering. Hang on. Open. open. Why can't I do oh, this? Yeah. Mm. Okay, here we go. Nope, and then it disappeared again. <sighs> mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Okay, nope, one more time. It's such a lag that I clicked too many times and it was like, yeah. You engineers and your programs on your computers that oh, lag, they no bog kidding. down. Yeah, they do. Like the CAD must just take up so much space or something. It does. <laughs> it, it does. It does. Yeah, some drawings oh, just take forever <laughs> to open. Oh, so um, I'm doing this. So now I just got to click once and just be patient. Don't touch. <laughs> hands off, hands off. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, it still says disabled, so you have to share the silver engineering one, not the one that has my name. Just to oh, add more. This one. Com yeah, more complication to things. Yes. Okay. Right. Here we go. Try that again. All right, I'm going to share the ad. Okay. So. Wait for it to show up. Uh, this is a masspubliknotices.org. Yep. Okay, and it says it was publication in the enterprise. Uh, it was telling you the numbers, the dates, yep. ad number. Okay, so there's your yep. proof. There's the proof. All right, I'll take it from here. Oh. Thanks. Um, legal notice, public hearing, notice on um, Conservation Commission, Bridgewater, Mass. And according to the Bridgewater General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 in the town. Oops. What happened? <laughs> Oh, you needed it? I'm sorry. I'm I need so to, sorry. I need, to, I need to legally thought, read it into the. I yeah. thought you were reading something else. I'm so sorry. No, I'm reading your legal ad. There you go. So I, I legally have to read it in. Um, so I'll go right to, back to where I was. Town of Bridgewater, local bylaw, the Bridgewater Conservation will hold a public hearing on Thursday, March 10, 2022 at 5.30 via Zoom for review of notice of intent filed by John Dizala. A link and instructions to participate in the meeting will follow to be posted in the calendar of the town's website at www.bridgewatermaster.org. The applicant seeks approval to construct a pool oh, and shed within the buffer zone and previously approved, uh, approved wetland line. The property is identified as the census map 111 lot 31 C8 30 colonial drive. All right, persons are encouraged to attend and there's a verification of the app that it was here and that was good teamwork. Thank you, Rebecca, you are now open. Okay, so I was trying to switch the screen to the plan. So as you so eloquently said, this is a proposed pool and some sheds on a previously approved wetland line in Colonial Drive. Now this is a um, open space community. So setbacks are a little tighter than you would expect. And the homeowner has nicely tucked this off to the side of the property because of the wetlands in the back. And so they are maintaining a 25 foot no touch. 
And um, let's see what else do we got. Like I said, we had a previously approved. So we were going by the green pipes that were put in place when the subdivision was done. Uh, it's your standard in-ground pool, concrete apron, uh, patio to improve the connection between the backyard deck and the side pool area. Uh, fence will be mulched, uh, not lawn. So it will be even easier for maintenance uh, for mowing. Um, a little bit of grade change, nothing huge, just enough to level it out and keep the pool at a, at a flat surface and um, improve the uh, backyard over there. So if, I'd like to hear what the commission has any questions. All right, uh, Steve, I'll start with you. Yeah. Uh, have, you, have you been out looked at it? I have, but I when I spoke to you earlier, I said it was a septic. I know. I <laughs> got my files crossed up. <laughs> okay, um, I'm swimming in that. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I d no, I do. I did. I did walk this before because uh, this one came in early. Um, it did. It came in a while ago, and I looked at it a while ago, and that's why I got it crossed up. Um, so yes, I took a look at this. Uh, it's an enhancement of a backyard, as Rebecca said. It's an existing. You can still see the green posts in the wetland. Um, mm -hmm. They're still there, um, which is great according to the bylaw. It means that some parts of the bylaw have stuck around for quite a, quite a while. Um, and again, it is, it's the enhancement of an existing very flat uh, backyard that is currently a mix of um, lawn and just, it's, it's cleared. It's, it's, it's functioning as a backyard right now. And this, these are just enhancements within the buffer zone. Um, I don't think it will take extensive grading as Rebecca has shown clearly here on the plan to, to get done what needs to get done. Uh, as you can see, the existing contours go from 38 down to 37. It looks like the wetlands probably at about 37 and a half or maybe the 36 contour, um, give or take. So uh, that wetlands probably not going to change much or come up much. It's probably not going to recede, recede that much either. So uh, this being a buffer zone project that's consistent with other projects that this commission has passed in the past, um, I would suggest that the commission issue an order of conditions and you know, uh, same conditions apply as always that we will go down and we'll inspect the silt fence and hay bale line before uh, before any construction is done uh, or any work starts in the backyard. And then we'll just keep a close eye on it. Sign will have to be posted out front with the DEP file number, which I did check today. As a matter of fact, the yes. DEP file number is good. Yes. Um, so I do know the DEP has been notified and has reviewed as well. Um, so again, everything checks out on this one. I got it crossed up when I was reviewing it today. Um, now I have to figure out what I crossed it up with because it's not on the agenda tonight. So oh, I'm just glad they're not swimming in septic. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a septic somewhere <laughs> that I'm approving or have to, I have to review somewhere. <laughs> so, I mean, I have no further issues with this. Um, I'm glad the wetlands were clearly marked active line. It's out of the 25 foot. Uh, we still use those special filters um, in the pool for uh, anything. Yes. Close to where Warren's at. All right. As far as my standpoint, I have no further questions or concerns. Um, Eileen, I'm good. Wendy, I have no concerns. Okay. Looks good. At this point, anybody on this filing for 30 uh, Colonial Drive have a question that they like to ask the commission? You guys seeing nothing? Oh, I do see the property owner if he would like to say something, but um, if not, that's fine as well. I was going to say, I know he's on, but I don't think there was anything more yeah, to add. If fine. you had no questions, he was just here for questions. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm here. here. It's just thank you. Moving. All right. Thank I, you. Uh, thank oh, you hold on, Marilyn. I appreciate it. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Do you want me, to make, uh, want me to make a motion? Yes. The chair would entertain a motion, please, to close. Motion to close the hearing on Colonial Drive. I second. All right, here in a second, any further discussions? I think we covered it all in, in the review. So uh, roll call vote, please. Marilyn McDonald, aye. Eileen Frisco, aye. Harry, no. Wendy Smith. <laughs> aye. All right, so that has been closed unanimously. Um, so we're good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great night. You too. You're Thank welcome. you, Rebecca. Bye -bye. We'll see you You're on welcome, the next John. one. Um, and we already did the minute meetings. Um, I'd like to hop off because I still get the baby here. Any other questions or concerns from the commission? 
Yep, I have no report. It was a really short week uh, for me because I was out for a majority of the time in between meetings. So I'm on the mend, feeling a lot better and ready to really uh, start grinding on days again. Good. Continue yeah, to heal. Chair would entertain a motion then, please. Motion to Thank adjourn. You. Thank, you. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys all. <laughs> Thank bye you. bye. No roll call? No, you can just adjourn the meeting. Okay. All right. Out of here. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> All set, Steve. All set.